Okay, so uh, where I left off here, I just created a brand new Pinterest account. There's various things that I want to look at, various settings briefly, and then we'll talk about more of the concepts about how to use Pinterest and, and, and get activity and such. Uh, all of these networks, as we've talked before, all of these, the purpose of all of these networks is to uh, be uh, a, a marketing platform, a way to advertise. Uh, so mentioning briefly before, uh, from before, the main actions of any network. You have likes, and different networks call these things different things perhaps, but there's the basic likes. There's reply, <coughs> replies, there's reshares, and then follows, and then buy. Well, the like is the basic unit of enjoyment. Uh, sounds very um, antiseptic. But uh, all of these networks have some very basic way to show that you liked something, that you enjoyed it. That was a very great photo. I'll click a like or a heart or a thumbs up or whatever the network calls it. You know how now, nowadays Facebook, for a long time, they had the thumbs up. And now they've got all these other reactions. They've got the... The, the whoa face, or they've got the angry face, or whatever. They've all got some kind of reaction. Uh, likes is the basic unit of enjoyment. Uh, very few networks have like a negative reaction. Most networks have a positive one. Uh, like I said, you, uh, LinkedIn or Facebook had the thumbs up forever, and people wanted a thumbs down. There's no thumbs down, but there is that one angry face. That's the closest thing. Uh, there's no you know negative like on Twitter, or there's no negative like on Pinterest. Uh, YouTube has a thumbs up and thumbs down, but not that many networks have like a negative reaction, uh, which is interesting. Uh, but this is the basic one, because least valuable. And it's not that it's bad that you got a like, of course. It's just that it's the least valuable because it's the least effort. The next level up in this chain here is a reply. Person comments, either a very basic "great job" or a, or "nice." But they reply with some one one word or something monosyllabic. Well, they took a little bit more extra time than just clicking like and moving on. They had to click reply. Uh, they had to start typing something, and then they click post. They took a little more effort, so it has a little more value based on just a basic like. Person comments. The next level up in value is, you can sort of think about it, uh, your content goes viral. And going viral is when something reaches more people, something digital in our, in our case, something digital reaches more people. Um, I want uh, more and more people to see my amazing pin with that product, with that link to buy. Well, when I get a reshare, it goes to more people. Now, we often think of going viral in, in that, oh, this got a million views, or 10,000 likes. Uh, yes, in that aspect, with a lot of activity, that's definitely viral. But even if your content goes over to six other people, that's a reshare, that's viral, in terms of uh, more people saw it, at the very least. Doesn't exactly mean that anyone bought anything, but all of this social media marketing is about trying to get as much exposure as possible. Like in the real world, that billboard has trying to get you more exposure. That radio ad gives you more exposure. Not necessarily because a thousand people a day see your billboard doesn't mean you'll get a thousand sales. So in the digital world, it's the same thing. We're just trying to increase our exposure. Follows are a subscriber a captive audience. Someone enjoys your content so much that they've chosen to click follow so that every time you post something new they can see it. They can become aware of it. So that has more value because then you have a captive audience that you will be posting to or directing your content to. And for many of us, then the ultimate goal of all of this, the ultimate action is you buy, make a sale. 
or um, I, I use the terminology over and over. I mentioned this last month, but I use the terminology of business and product and brand. But all of this applies if you're a nonprofit organization, if you're a, an individual professional, anything you're trying to do online, this will apply. But I'm using terms of product and brand. Let's say I'm a motivational speaker. My product are my speeches that I give. Or my brand is me, the speaker. So I would still try to use social media to get likes for my motivational speaking company and try to get followers and try to get people to buy my service. So all of that still applies to whatever you're trying to do online. So all of these actions I'm trying to accomplish before trying to get any of the above actions. Set up your, or I'll say set your account settings as necessary. Set up your profile. So bio, about, organization, we'll look at this, both of these in a moment. So you want to set up your account, the settings first, you want to set up the basics of the profile, uh, sorry I use the term again, profile, page, uh, see how generic that is, set up your page, uh, the about info and stuff, we'll see that in a moment, and then create three to five pieces of content to show what you're about. Before trying to get followers on Twitter, I need to have tweeted three or five times or so or more to show people this is what my account is about, this is what you hope to see. Before trying to get followers and likes on Facebook, I should post some amount of content to show people if you like my page, if you follow my page, here's what you can expect. And then obviously at Pinterest, if I want to get followers on Pinterest, if I want to get that captive audience, I need to show people, here's what you ex can expect to see on my Pinterest account. This is generic for all of the networks, specifically for Pinterest. We have a, a few more details. Create one to three boards. And then three to six pins per board. This terminology, if you don't get it, we'll talk about it, of course. But Pinterest has uh, another kind of unique selling proposition um, that the other networks didn't have for a while. Um, so just to backtrack over here, Pinterest USP boards organization. Thank you. Okay, so Pinterest has boards, which are ways to organize your content, to group your content together. Organization or grouping. When you tweet, you, you don't really group together the content exactly. You can use a hashtag. It's kind of a way to organize content on uh, Facebook. Uh, if you upload a lot of photos, you can organize them into albums. That's a way to organize. Um, over on uh, Google Plus, we saw communities and and um, what was their term? Communities and collections. And on Pinterest, we have boards. So let me direct your attention to ancient Pinterest. This is Pinterest 1.0. This pinboard. Stuff has been pinned here on various topics. And you might look at it and see this is useful to me. I'm going to take that class. Oh, here's the calendar. That's useful. Involving this and that. Here's a map to the campus. Well, this is one board. But imagine that we have different boards and the different walls of the room. And whatever thing that's going to be on that board is related to jobs that are open. And related on the board over there is about classes that are available. And the one in the corner is about some other information. So every board in the room has a topic, has a purpose. 
Pinterest. It's the digital version. You create this account and you have these various boards where you put various things into those boards. Um, what, how many to create and what to create, we'll, we'll cover it, but I'm saying here also, if I'm going to try to get followers, which ultimately hopefully gets me sales, I want to have content. And Pinterest is the one that's a little different, and then you should have a few boards. And in each of the boards, some content. So if I'm going to do three boards and three pins each, that's nine pins, three times three. Whereas over on Twitter, I'd be fine with putting, um, when I said here, I could put five tweets before trying to get followers. It's going to be a little bit more content on Pinterest, perhaps. Uh, if I have one board, I'm going to put three in those. Okay, that's fine. But we will see that the boards are very useful for organization. And the reason I'm saying so many pins on each board is because uh, the board could look incomplete or amateurish if it looks empty. Let's say you I have the great idea to create seven boards. I'll create 12 boards, so many topics. And I don't put anything into them. It looks like I don't know what I'm doing. All of these like empty boards. And it's like a mall with all of these empty shops. It's a great mall, but the shops are empty. What's going on? Same thing on, on Pinterest here. You have 12 boards with all these topics, and there's nothing in them. What are you doing? So fill the boards minimally, which I believe is either five or six. We'll see in a moment. Fill the boards minimally. to show activity and professionalism. We'll see how to do this all in a moment. But these are the basic things before trying to get followers, before trying to get likes and replies, before trying to get the ultimate goal of making a sale, I need to have the basics of my account set up on Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, on all the networks. This is one of the ways why people uh, don't do well on social media because they're trying to ask for too much too soon. In the real world, would you want to hire a company that doesn't, you know, doesn't have uh, a location or doesn't have business cards or doesn't have, you know, that basic professional stuff? And not every business or industry needs to be that professional, but most of us will put more um, preference or faith into some business that looks more professional than another. So let's look at some of those basic things first. Um, on, before we look at this other cool stuff, um, on the top right corner, I see a little generic person icon. And when I hover my mouse over it, it says my profile and settings and building and other stuff. Let's go to settings first. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. um, so where it says profile, mm -hmm. uh, that's not going to get mixed up between your personal profile or? Well, it depends. It, it should not because um, I created a brand new account, so it's going to be separate from my personal one. However, if I've got a personal account, and then I try to create a new account, I have to be careful because the personal account is linked to a certain email. And if I try to reuse the same email for the business one, they may get linked. And then that's when things could get mixed up. So it might be useful to have a personal email address for your personal profile, and then a business email for your business page. Yeah. Unlike Facebook, they're not inherently linked. So uh, I don't want that personal Pinterest. That business exactly. That's a that's a big difference with Facebook and Pinterest. Where in Facebook, I would use my personal email first to create the business one. On Pinterest, you can go directly to create the business one. All right. Let's look at settings. So there's a part to change the email, change the password, languages, business type. So all the stuff we said previously, you can change it there. We 
have search privacy. I really do not recommend to ever turn this one on. Hide your profile from search engines. So there's purposes for it, but not many of us need that purpose. And here is, I'm going to hide myself from the search engine so people can't find me. Well, you're shooting yourself in the foot, so you have that option, but I hardly ever recommend to turn that on. Let's see, personalization. These don't matter what you put here. Use sites you visit to improve which recommendation and ads you see. And use info from our partners to improve which recommendations and ads you see. Now, all of these networks nowadays have an ad system. In the beginning, in the golden age, there were no ads. It was people connecting with people. But then these companies thought, well, there's no money in giving a free platform to give free speech to everyone. Let's put ads in this stuff. So now you see ads on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, on Snapchat, on everything. Well, by turning these off, this is not saying don't show me ads. You're not going to be able to avoid that. What this is saying is, let's let Pinterest try to show you ads that are relevant to you. So yeah, your business would also see ads from other businesses. There's no way around that. But here, do you at least want relevant ads? If my business is about food, show me food-related ads. If I turn these off, it's going to show me random, thing, random ads about cars or fencing or whatever. So it doesn't matter what you put here. But these are related to uh, the types of ads you'll see. Yes? Uh, back it up to the email. If I wanted to change, like you put that email to start it up, and then tomorrow you decide to change it to another email, would that affect it? It won't affect anything. You just put the new email and, and save it and confirm it, and you've got the new email you instead use, of the old one. You just turn, enter with that new email. Okay. You use your new email to enter with it, yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So one more thing here about personalization. This one says, use sites you visit to improve ads. This is you're agreeing to let Pinterest put a cookie on your computer. And a cookie is a little basic informational file that they will store on your computer to track you. And regarding privacy and all of that online, um, this is something for you to decide if you agree on or not. Would you like Pinterest to track you as you use the internet? And I know that sounds, you know, very like, wow, that's they're spying on me. Yes, every website spies on you nowadays. If you don't know that by now, I hate to break it to you. Every website that you visit spies on you. And I say spies in terms of to give them the bef the benefit of the doubt, uh, to show you relevant things, to show you relevant ads. If I visit a lot of technology websites. I tend to see ads about technology and I might actually see an ad about technology I want to buy. So that's the main purpose for all of that tracking that's going on on, on, on websites. Be beyond that, I don't doubt some nefarious things happen, but again, unfortunately, nowadays it's either use it or not, agree to it or not. We're really still on the Wild West edge of all of this about, I care about my privacy, I don't want to be followed, why are you spying on me? Yes, there's a way to do ad blockers and proxies and VPNs and all that advanced stuff. If you don't know what any of those things I said are, there, there, there it is, I rest my case. It's complicated if you want to really be private and anonymous online. So that's not a discussion to have at the moment. Uh, but these are the things that are now part and parcel of being online, that you get tracked. You can deactivate your account right there. If you decide Pinterest is not going to work for me, I go to another network, you deactivate it right there. Yes. The 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 your account gets deleted. Uh, and the content you've uploaded and you get a little bit of a window you get a, um, a cooling off period I think it's 10 days or two weeks or so if you change your mind you can log back in and then it, it undeletes itself uh, but when you click deactivate and delete it deletes your content your your profile yeah yeah uh, again this is the part about giving them the benefit of the doubt they they claim to, and I will 
believe them until I see the next expose on CNN that yes they uh, they will delete everything if you choose to delete yeah yeah, if you were here in previous months, you saw how difficult it was sometimes to try to create the account because of the problems with spam and hacking and all of that. And it seems that most of us were able to get in pretty easily. So at the moment, uh, it seems to be kind of easy to create the account, which is good and bad. It's good for us that we were able to do it easily, but it may then eventually be a problem for Pinterest in that spammers get on it easily. Okay, so here's the stuff that I was saying about you want your basics created first before trying to get followers. Okay, the name of my business. Great. Uh, picture. So you need a logo for your business or else you'll be a generic person. Notice it's a little circle. So if your logo is a rectangle, it will probably be cut off at the edges and look weird. So you need to have a version of your logo that is circular or a square that will when it gets cropped to a circle will look okay as a circle. At the moment my Pinterest address what I would put on my billboard or business cards or flyers is pinterest.com slash victorsbakery0132. If I instead want a more readable name I would change it here. What I would say before trying to change any other settings, I recommend to change that and click Save. But be careful here. I've got a fake account. Um, I'm going to delete this when the class is over. But just to show you, if I'm trying to create this account, Victor's Bakery, uh, it won't tell you if the name is taken until you try to save. Other networks pop up right away to tell you that account is saved. Are taken. So I'm telling you this because before you waste your time writing your bio and everything else and then eventually clicking save and it tells me oh the name is taken and you might lose that screen because it didn't save I would recommend if this is going to be your real name eventually try to set the name then save the name and then we'll do the rest of these options for for the moment because it's not a real account I'm not really going to set it to anything. But just note that this doesn't tell you dynamically or automatically that the name is taken until you try to save. We have about and we have location. This gives you, I think, 160 characters to write about you, about your business. So what I'll say about that regarding about you. Use the space to write complete sentences full of keywords of what your business is about and what people are searching for. So I said complete sentences. People often use that bio as a place to write cookies, comma, pastries, comma, San Diego, comma, just keywords, just spamming keywords. That's not what that's about. Um, all of these networks, as I said, have some amount of trouble with spam and bad accounts and bots and stuff. Well, these networks often have to operate under guilty until proven innocent. So if you engage in tactics that seem to be like a spammer, guilty, and then you will be either demoted or removed from the network. And it's hard to then explain, well, what I meant was this, I'm not a spammer, etc. So use complete sentences, real human readable sentences, not keywords that you're trying to get found by Google, but real sentences that have your keywords. So bad would be simply a list like cookies, cakes, San Diego. You know, the, the, the biography of just keywords is not good. Better San Diego bakery. 
S similar to location, exactly. Yeah, you you don't you want to put something a little, you want to put something legit. Yep. Same thing with location. Uh, better is that you have a real sentence. San Diego Bakery. Okay. Best is San Diego Bakery specializing in healthy cookies and cakes. Founded. In 1989, and um, in it to win it, whatever. Just uh, um, something longer than just keywords. I have the keyword bakery, San Diego, healthy cookies, and other things that. I could think to write because I have a, up to 140, 160, I think, 160 characters. That's the best one because you have the keywords, you have human readable sentences, you don't look like a spammer, you're appeasing the network, and you've got these keywords that can help you get found. That's what I said here. Think, of ter think in terms of a person searching the networks and how you could get found. And you might not have the answers right away. That, that's OK. Maybe you fill in a short version now, and then as you use the network and figure yourself out, you put the something longer. You can edit that whenever you want. So what you put here helps you um, SEO? Yeah, what you put here helps you get found with SEO. This is an aspect of search engine optimization either getting found via Google or getting found inside of Pinterest. So the keywords to help you get found. This, of course, I'm mentioning Pinterest now, but this applies on all the networks. You would want to do the same sort of concept over on Facebook. Facebook has a screen where you can set about your business. So does Pinterest, so does Snapchat. They all have some sort of about information. Oh, uh, let me mention something I was going to mention earlier that I forgot. Uh, we're not we're not really going to cover it in class, but does anyone know about the brand new social network that's suddenly hot? No one has heard of Vivo. Wait, not not Vivo. What's it called? Not Vivo. Sorry, but it starts with a V. What's it called here? Oh, Vero. Yeah, Vero. Not Vivo. What's that? Yeah, um, what was that one? Um, yeah, there were there were like two or three that would pay you. Yeah. Vero, here we go. Vero, hot Instagram alternative, but will it stick around? So, um, oh, they already got the three million users. That was fast. Uh, Vero is a network that came out sometime last year, at the end of last year, uh, but then now it's getting more activity. More celebrities are jumping on it. For example, the director, Zack Snyder, he's on Vero, and he's talking, <coughs> talking with his fans and stuff. Well, yet another social network I need to learn? Yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Um, networks come out all the time for various purposes, various niches, various audiences. Um, so, oh, it's a three-year-old, interesting. So they've been around for three years, but I didn't really hear about them until the end of last year. Interesting. So... Um, they uh, they are trying to be a network with no ads. Well, every other network has ads, so what their unique selling proposition is, no ads. There have been other networks with no ads as well. Uh, Mastodon, for example, and Elo. Has anyone ever heard of Mastodon social network? Nope. Has anyone heard of Elo social network? Nope. Okay, so there's been lots of social networks. And you don't need to be uh, on them all or know about them all, but you never know. I, I thought that they were under three million. Uh, I thought that they were under one million users just last week, but it looks like maybe they're starting to take off. So that might be a place for you to get on there, or your competitors are not. And again, I'm not, I'm not really going to cover it in this class. It's way too new. I don't. I'm not versed in it either. But it seems to be that only at the moment it's on an app. You cannot get to Vero without an app either on 
iPhone or Android. So I've got to read this article about what's this controversy. I didn't, I didn't hear what the controversy was. Yes. This is part of the reason why it's all so different. No ads, but they're going to charge you to use it from day one. Now, they said that for the first million users, it would be completely free for life. They've reached three million now, and their, and their, reason, and their recent uh, blog post said, we are making free accounts for the moment indefinitely. So I don't know if at a certain point they'll say, okay, we've got enough people, now we'll charge. So maybe, just as to get your name claimed on the account, maybe go to it and claim your account while it's still free at the moment, and then if you ever decide to actually use it, and then it's paid later, you've got your free version. This one also focuses a lot on art, art, artistic types. Um, their, uh, their demographic. So that's something to look at, but obviously today we're covering Pinterest. But there's lots of social networks besides the three or four or five that you might have heard of. There's even this article mentions other ones um, like uh, Secret, I think I heard of that one. Ello, I've, I've used that one. Peach, I've used that one. Meerkat, I've used that. Mastodon. So there's all of these networks that, that are very small, very niche that you might not have heard of. And uh, for most of us, well, we don't have time to manage all these networks. We can do one or two. Uh, so uh, this is just interesting to, to bring up. There's a new network on the block. Well, it's three years old, but it's getting hot at the moment. In any event, if you were to create a Vero account, you would want to do the same sort of thing. You would want to create a biography and location or whatever and fill in the basics. So let's say I fill this in and I go on. I have something called showcase. I can't do this yet because it says feature your best ideas at the top of your profile. And again, look at the terminology. Your best ideas, aka your best pins, your best pictures, your best content. So instead of saying pin your picture to the top of your profile like you do on Twitter or um, Facebook, feature your best ideas. You can't do that yet because you don't have any pins yet. But these are pins that you would show automatically right away when people visit your account. These are the first things that you would you would show them. Uh, claiming your website is a process here where you would where you would uh, Follow the steps that would be listed here to link your website with your Pinterest, and you get this extra stuff. Um, it's a little bit of a technical process that we that we um, can't quite do in person in class. I mean, because you would either copy and paste some code into your website, or you would upload a specific file to your website. This is how you can verify that you are the owner or controller of that website. And then what will happen is you will get a little check mark on your Pinterest account that says this is a verified account. So we, we can't quite do it in class because it assumes you've got a website and it assumes you know how to log into your website and do a little bit of you know administrative stuff. <clears throat> I would recommend to do it at some point, however. notifications um, I think Pinterest is one of the ones that's worst about this uh, the default here unless they've changed it yep there it is the default is that you will get emails for everything that happens on Pinterest and you will sign up for Pinterest and suddenly you're gonna get like five emails every day about what's new on Pinterest what's happened what's hot suggestions etc um, I personally think that's way too much so I would recommend they're under settings by email change it to something the good stuff however they define that I have it on off I don't need any more emails I've got enough to deal with but uh, these other ones like activity on Pinterest I would leave these on meaning when I'm logged into Pinterest yes show me the activity that's happening that little number up there who followed me 
who replied to me, yeah, show me all of that when I'm logged into Pinterest. So I'll leave that one on. But I don't need an email every time someone follows me or replies to me. So I have mine on off. This one regarding business for Pinterest, I would leave that one on for a little while as you get some of their emails about welcome to Pinterest, here's good advice for businesses, etc. And then after you kind of learn about it a little bit more, maybe you can turn that one off. But the one about tell me everything that happens on Pinterest, I don't like that one. Push notifications, the default is also everything, and that one means alerts on your phone. So if you've got Pinterest app on your phone, it will be popping up to tell you you've got a new like, you've got a new follower, and you probably want that one on. Well, it depends. Do you want to be constantly be alerted of what's happening on Pinterest, or do you want to set your time that I'm going to sit down today on Pinterest and do Pinterest? If you leave it on, everything, you're going to get the notifications of stuff happening, and you'll have to deal with it, and you'll feel like it's overwhelming, perhaps. So, just the good stuff, or no push notifications, you can decide. Home feed. Here's the one about um, suggestions. Do you want Pinterest to suggest to you different pictures, different accounts? Uh, you can turn it off, it won't matter. But the reason to show picked for you and suggestions and all of that again is for inspiration, uh, for advice, for competitor analysis. So by showing picked for you or following other accounts, other uh, profiles, pages, or boards. By showing, picked for you, or following, you can get inspiration and do competitor analysis. You will see what other bakeries are doing, what other law firms are doing, what other businesses are doing. Uh, that other business will not be alerted if you're browsing their content. They will be alerted if you follow them, of course, or if you like their pins. But by sort of being anonymous and looking at their content, you, you won't alert them. So competitor analysis is, is uh, I'll just say it this way first, spying on the competition or observing what they do so how often they pin what types of content they share what uh, verbiage they use just seeing the competition what else what other kinds of restaurants I have an Italian food restaurant I'm gonna look at other Italian food restaurants how do they use Pinterest how do they use Facebook how do they use whatever no alert is given to them if you don't like or follow just by viewing and reading and, and such and clicking uh, they don't get alerts uh, but if you like they will get an alert Victor's Bakery liked your liked your photo and then they say who's Victor's Bakery and then they and then they spy on me if you follow an account then they will get alerted of course
Pinterest has a way for you to connect to these other social networks and then whatever you post on Pinterest can go to the other social networks. So if I'm running Facebook and Pinterest, I can set this up and what I post on Pinterest will automatically go to Facebook. That'll save me some effort. Um, and also the purpose of linking uh, these networks, for example, Gmail is um, you're, you're giving the network permission to view who you are connected to so that Pinterest can invite them join us on Pinterest. Victor's Bakery is on Pinterest. You have a connection to Victor's Bakery. Come join Pinterest and vice versa. Security and apps. If you've connected uh, your Pinterest to anything else, it'll show you there. And uh, this will show you who has logged into the account before, just for security. So any questions on the settings screen? If you make any changes, remember to click Save. I'm going to cancel that. And you can go back to any of these settings whenever you want. When we're done with that screen, let's go over to My Profile. So here's, uh, we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Assuming I filled in my logo, my biography, it will, it will show up here. You don't have a lot of customization regarding colors and design and such. You put a logo and biography and, and all of that. But the customization will come from, from here, pins, boards, and tries. Tries is something that was added relatively recently to Pinterest. Again, this is another one of their unique things. Pinterest is, is, is a bit more active, not just look at this great photo. It's about look at this great photo of this item. Why don't you buy it? Why don't you try it? Why don't you make it yourself? So the pins are all of the um, content that you upload, the pictures, the photos, the links, etc. And the boards are the organization. These three pictures are related to this topic. These five things are related to this topic. They're all in a board. So you have to have a pin in at least one board. Every pin must be in at least one board. A pin can be in more than one board. Create as many boards as you want. But don't leave them empty. It does not look professional. That does not look professional. Yes. If you start deleting the board from that effect and the other pins you do. If you've got a pin in more than one board and you delete a board, uh, if it existed on another board, the pin will still exist. So when then you delete the board and all your pins were in that one board, then the pin could be deleted. Now the, the issue also is if someone reshared your pin, well now someone else has a copy of it. So even if you delete your own versions of it, if someone had repinned, which is resharing, there might still be a copy in Pinterest, even though you deleted your copies. Yes? So the pins are not in kind of quote unquote a library, and then boards are not just organized or containers. It's actually, it, it, it belongs to that board. So it's another instance of the same same content in a second board, and then another instance of that same content in a third board. Is that correct? Yeah, behind the scenes, there's a big catalog of everything you've uploaded, but everything has to be in a board from us, the user. And so if I've got uh, a pin in one board, yeah, there's another instance of it, sort of another copy of it in another board, 
And if I delete all my boards, then yes, the final version of it gets deleted. Unless someone else copied it to their own boards, then I can't delete it from their board. Uh, so we've also got secret boards. Only you and the people you invite can see these. So this is some system to set up like VIPs. Um, there's there's uses for this if you've got like uh, subscriptions and people that pay for the subscription can have access to this uh, most of the time I don't cover this that much because for a lot of people it doesn't it doesn't it isn't that useful but on a case-by-case -case basis it may be and most of the time you want to use these networks publicly everything that you do on these networks for your business should be as public as possible so that people can find it comment on it, like it, reply to it, follow you by. When you start to put things under private or secret and, and all of that, less people can see it, and therefore you get perhaps less views, less traffic, less results. I have a question on that. Yeah. Um, it might come in handy for my client who's a plastic surgeon, for instance. Yeah. Um, but uh, then that, does that mean the private ones cannot be shared? I have to double check on that. It's either that um, it's either that no one can people need a special access to see it, but then can be shared. But I'm pretty sure and we can actually look under learn more here. I'm pretty sure that if it's in a private board, it's private, and then it should not be passed passed around. Let's see if we can just find a quick answer. Making secret boards public, vice versa. Who can see? Only you can see secret pins and boards won't appear in the home feed, in search, or anywhere else around Pinterest. When you save things here, the person who saved it won't get a notification. And when you save pins from a secret, we won't show the name of the person. When you save pins from a secret board, okay, it looks like they can be shared out elsewhere, but it won't show who it came from. So it's a little bit about anonymity, not exactly locking it down. OK, uh, and then tries. Once there is content uh, that you create or look at other content, um, you can set that. I've tried that. I've eaten that. I've eaten there. I've built that. Um, for you as a business, there isn't as much value to that. In the opposite, there is of a person trying your stuff or buying your stuff. But what we can do now before the break is, is this. Let's take a look at what a board looks like for organization. Uh, you have there, under boards, we can create a board. We can either create a board at the moment that we're adding a pin, or we can create a board first and then add pins. I would recommend to create the board first and then populate it. We'll see why in just a moment. So as I said over here, you want one to three boards first, and then we'll populate it with three to six pins. So recommendation, <coughs> create the boards first, set them up then populate them. Even though on the spot you can create boards at the same time that you're pinning, I would recommend this way, and I'll show you why. Right here. So if you click the plus, name, is it secret? So let's say I'm Victor's Bakery, I want to have a board all about cookies, so I type cookies. Or I'm gonna post pictures all about my cakes that I sell. So OK, I'll call it cakes. Before you do that, notice the suggestion. Create a name, like, places to go, recipes to make. Notice again the active voice. Simply creating a board called cookies, well, that's the basic level. Everyone does that. The more intermediate and advanced levels are calling these boards in terms of also keywords or an active voice. So if I'm trying to sell cupcakes, and I just call this cupcakes, that's minimal. I would think more in terms of like, are these going to be the gluten-free cupcakes? Are these going to be like classic cupcakes? Are these going to be, you know, wedding party 
cupcakes. What are what, what's some more detail about the kinds of cupcakes that I'm putting here? Let's say I, I, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer, I'm trying to use Pinterest. Well, I'm trying to ultimately use Pinterest or any social media to get clients. I want to get hired to represent people as a lawyer. So I have to put content on these boards regarding advice or tips. So things that you might hire a lawyer for. Uh, let's say, you know, a, a, a final will. So uh, ad, advice for your will. So instead of just calling it your will, or how to make your will, advice for your will, and then I would populate it with pictures, links, content regarding that topic, because ultimately I'm using all of these social networks as marketing for my products or skills, and when people find these things, it increases the possibility then of getting results. A phone call, visit my website, hire me, etc. Let's say here, I'm going to say, uh, fun cupcakes for kids. So the cupcakes I'm going to show here that I'm trying to sell are the fun ones with rainbow sprinkles and, you know, green dough and all of that for kids. So I'll click create. A few versions ago on Pinterest, you had another option. The name of the board and a description of the board. Now, they don't show you the description unless you do this extra step. So a lot of people that don't know how to manage Pinterest or just know the basics are going to miss out on this trick that I'm going to show you. After you create your board, okay, there's there's then empty board and then there's sections and such. We'll look at that. But before that, there's also here a, a little pencil to edit the, uh, the board. Unfortunately, I, I think on Pinterest, they rely a little too much on icons here and there, and some of them don't make sense on first blush. Most of you probably saw that as a, as a pen or pencil. Sometimes people tell me that looks like a thermometer. Um, this one right here, what would you say that icon looks like or does? It's a share icon to, to you know, email people about this board and share it on Twitter. But the icon, it's supposed to be, I think, like an outbox icon. You know, there's inbox and outbox. Uh, doesn't make too much sense. And the odd thing also is on a lot of these, when you roll your mouse over, it doesn't pop up to tell you. So I've noticed that on Pinterest. They need to fix that. Some of these icons don't make sense. What is this icon about until you click on it? Usually nothing bad happens if you click. You can just cancel. But this share icon will let you email this board to more people, copy the link to it, send it to WhatsApp, etc. Let's see, is that WhatsApp? Maybe. Anyway, let's look at the edit. Here's where you can change the name of it. I want to change the name. But here is the secret kind of um, spot for you to put a description with another place to fill this up with sentences full of keywords. This one board itself here can be SEO optimized for people to find the stuff in this board in addition to what you've got in your biography. I would do the same thing here. So I would write something like, uh, check out our collection of fun, kid-friendly cupcakes. So I'm saying again, fun. I'm saying this time, kid-friendly. I'm saying again the keyword cupcakes. Uh, we only use the best ingredients. Uh, we only we only use organic ingredients. All our cupcakes are are low low on the glycemic index. You know whatever I'm trying to say that's great for kids that parents are looking for. I want to buy cupcakes for my kids, but I don't want them hopped up on sugar. Oh, yours are low glycemic. Great. Um, so another spot for you to write keywords, real sentences 
for what people would be searching for on Google, on Yahoo, on Bing, in Pinterest to help you get found. I'm going to use the best ingredients and all our cupcakes are low, glyce low on the glycemic index. Here's another thing that is not set automatically on the other screen. A category. The stuff in this board is related to this topic. And when people are searching or looking at those interests, remember when we created the account, it says pick some interests. Well, these are the list of those interests. Uh, not all of them, but these are the links where I would put if people that are interested in food and drinks, and my board is full of stuff about food and drink, my board, my pictures could show up there once they've chosen that interest when they cre once they create their their account. Yeah. Can you put more than one in categories? Nope. One board can only have one category, but you can make more than one board and choose different categories. Uh, I would be careful about that. However, I have fun cupcakes for kids, but I would not create fun cupcakes for kids part two and then use a different category. I would use a different name and title and concept and then a different category. So I'll put that in the notes here. Recommendation create boards. Create the boards first and populate them. Then edit the board to include. Description and category. Most people don't do this and are at a disadvantage. Yes? It doesn't look like it, but is there a way to duplicate the board and then go in and edit and change the board name and stuff so that you've got the same content? Let me confirm that right here. On your on these three dots, there's often extra options, so I'll click on that. Send a board, share a board, create widget. Doesn't look like it at the moment. Invite people and that. Yep, at the moment they don't have that where you can duplicate a board and then change it. So we'd have to do the extra effort to set it up manually. Uh, what else was here? Okay, so we've got secret. You can make that secret, and we saw the details about that. And then we have collaborators. I think Pinterest has one of the clunkiest ways to do this, one of the worst ways to do this, in that you can have other people help you manage your Twitter relatively easily. You can have other people help you manage your Facebook pretty easily. Pinterest is the, is the one that they kind of do it in a weird way. I, I don't like it. You have to individually set collaborators per board. It's not that someone else can log in and help you manage the whole business account. You allow other people to collaborate or help you edit this board, and you do it one email at a time, one board at a time. You can't really upload a whole list of, I want these three people to help me manage this account. You have to set it for each board. I'll say note, each board needs to have collaborators collaborators each board needs to have uh, collaborators uh, assigned on a case by case basis and then the last thing and we'll take a break <coughs> um, you see that there are sections in the board. Um, sections are relatively new in that people would uh, create these boards and they would add stuff and add stuff and add stuff. And then the board has got 20 things, 50 things, 100 things. And the person is um, kind of scrolling through to find what's interesting to them and it kind of becomes white noise. Uh, so you can create sections in a board uh, to organize the content in a board. So it's like sub-organization in organization. Uh, it could be useful to you to then put sections in boards if you've got a lot of content, you know, like more than 10 things, usually more than 20 and such. 
And so in one section, I'm talking about fun cupcakes for kids. So there's going to be a section that is about uh, like um, superhero cupcakes. Okay, so there's an organization in there. I can add another section. This one's going to be princess cupcakes. There's going to be what else do kids like? Um, sparkly cupcakes. So within this board, cupcakes for kids, I have three sections. And in these sections, I would put this different content. This is completely optional. It's more organization. It's more keywords that people could search for. But it's another thing to manage in that now there are these five slots being previewed here for this and five for that and five for that. This is the same problem about, I'm going to create 12 boards, but I don't put anything in those boards. It looks like a ghost town. As I then create sections and I have seven ideas for sections, it's going to look like a ghost town when you've got all these empty slots. So if I have these three sections, I would want to have five on each of those. That's 15 pins in this one board, plus the other seven boards I created with four more sections. So it's a lot of content. And again, uh, this is to look professional, to know what you're doing, to have content, to not look like a ghost town. Yes? Is this auto-saving? Yep, as soon as you add a section and then you click Add right there, that automatically saves. There's no other Save button to, to have to press. And uh, just sort of a general overall question on the um, frequency, not the frequency, the um, uh, recency of the, the posts. Mm. So, you know, if you spend a lot of time and you've got 15 pieces of content on your one board, mm. um, how... Like how is that dated, or how, how does it...? Well, it, it is, uh, there is the timeline of that if you've got followers, and if you're posting to all of your boards, they will see it when you publish it. Um, most likely, Pinterest will change their algorithm like Twitter and Facebook has, in that there's no more chronological timeline on those networks. It used to be that if someone posted something on Facebook a week ago, if you didn't see it a week ago, you have to go back. Well, Facebook now, and Twitter, they try to show you things that are relevant or interesting out of sequence. Pinterest, I believe, is still sequential. So if someone follows you uh, and you posted something last week, they have to scroll back to find last week. Now, if someone has uh, follows you right now brand new, well, everything is old because it already was posted before. So they would have to go out of their way to go look at your content, to go look at the past. So leading into how frequent uh, yeah, you, you should be active on it, and I've said for the other networks that it's useful to be posting something at least once per week. More often is perhaps better, depending on your competition and audience and all of that. But whatever's in the past is in the past, and therefore, if you get suddenly 20 new followers, you might want to reshare what you did in the past to bring it up to, uh, to put it up to your attention of the new followers and such. So let's take one more break. Um, we'll look at using this a little bit more. It's about 12.20-ish. We'll take a break until 12.30, and then we'll go on.